Hi everyone, it's Phil here from Ashton Leather and welcome to Let's Buy Boots. And today I've brought in reinforcements. I, I <laughs> Do you go by David or Dave? I've heard um, a friend of ours call you Dave, but... It doesn't matter. Whatever feels most comfortable. And I, I was David for like 20 something years and then some friends started calling me Dave and I was like, I kind of like that. So like, e either way. Cool guy, Dave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've yeah. never gone by Philip because it's just... I think Phil is so much cooler, uh, but I feel like it's one of those things like only my dad can call me or my mom can call me Philip. And it's like when they're mad, I should clarify with a lot of this stuff is I'm not necessarily buying, hitting the buy button today. I sort of want to go through the shopping process of what it goes into to figure out, you know, what's the best pair for me. The stores we're going to look at, I got Lafoe, J. Crew, these heavy hitters, uh, J. Crew, Nordstrom, Armory, and then we're going to look at brick and mortar. And maybe you could tell me first uh, while I open up my beer. Uh, and by the way, I've got a caramel chocolate churro beer <laughs> from uh, there's a local place called Moody Tongue. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But while I crack this guy open, maybe you can tell me about the Aldens that you currently have. Yeah. Yeah, man. First of all, this is super fun. Yes. I mean, I can't, I cheers. can't remember the last time. Yeah. Cheers. I got a, it's a Scotch ale. My friend gave this to me full bore. Oh man. I've never had it before. So I'm excited, but yeah, I don't know the last time that I have gone shopping with a buddy, you know, so this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had three Aldens in my life, including these two that I'm about to show you. So this is my, this is my, the, my first shell Cordovan footwear ever. Uh, this is color eight, of course, from Horween. Um, Alden puts their proprietary acrylic finish on it. So it's a little darker than it comes out of the tannery as, um, but yeah, color eight, berry last, plain toe boot, tan calfskin wingtip boots. These ones are from brick and mortar in Seattle. And then the other ones are a stock makeup from, well, not stock, but they're stocked to the store. Hmm. Um, San Francisco Alden, which is one of the two factory stores. I noticed when I was start, starting down this Alden uh, shopping trail again, so I have four different pairs or five different pairs of Aldens that are all different sizes. And they kind of all work, but some are definitely better than others. And one thing I want to keep hammering here is sizing. So tell me about the sizing. Do you have all the same size? I'm a sizing enthusiast. <laughs> so, so. I love the leather. I love the boots, but sizing is like a whole thing for me. So um, these are the same size. These are both very last. And for both of them, I went down a half size from my U.S. Brannock. So my U.S. Brannock is a 10, a 10 C, almost D. So I usually just treat it like a D. 90% of the time, if you're on Style Forum or Instagram or the Reddit, um, Good Your Wealth subreddit, if, and you ask about those sizes, everybody's like, go a half size down from your Brannock for a true balance and very last. And I've kind of stuck with that. I, I made a mistake. Originally I had a used pair of Indies, like I want to say two years ago that I had for just a quick minute before I realized they didn't fit in, in size eight and a half because the true balance is so big and my feet are so low volume. Like they did fit onto my feet and it's not like they hurt or anything, but it was just very clear from the arch support, like, you know, poking me, in the wrong place interesting, and, and stuff like that, that it was like, oh, this is not the right size. Definitely not the right size. It's interesting to me as I, I struggle with the sizing because I think one of my favorite pairs uh, back there is size 10 D. And I kind of have like this disgusting like duck foot <laughs> where like I get pretty <laughs> wide. Uh, and it, it kind of bums me out for two reasons. It's, it's harder to find a size that fits. But secondly, is the last, when they get wider, they have to change the proportions. And I think they just look more lame. Uh, like I have a pair of four or threes uh, back here somewhere. And because they're a triple wide, I think they just look a little bit more lame. Anyways, the point of bringing this up was I I think I have a, a indie boot that's too small on me. But the Chrome Excel that it's made out of is sort of like very an additional level of forgiveness on top of the true balance and berry last being kind of full is I'm noticing the Chrome Excel is like really forgiving and sort of stretching out on me. And they're now my most comfortable pair, but I think, I think honestly, they're probably too small. The sizing thing is so hard. I mean, do you have any general suggestions? 
I'm going to sort of preempt your answer by saying, the, the, do you recommend flying to New York or somewhere where there's an Alden shop just to get sized properly? Like we were hearing from Brett. You don't have to, especially because with the Barry and the True Balance, you're pretty safe, relatively speaking, just because those are some of the most common lasts with Alden, but also on the planet, really. Like that's almost as good as a Brannock as far as, you can give your berry size or your true balance size and almost every company in the world and almost every person on these forums can size you based off that. Okay. And the problem, problem is like maybe you sized wrong, so that's not helpful. But um, I would agree with Brett um, overall, I think, just because, you know, if all you want is like one true balance boot or something, maybe online it by itself is fine. But like when I went into the Alden shop in San Francisco, they were able to show me many different lasts that I could put on in many sizes and also many widths. It's not a matter of if you don't do that, you'll get boots that don't fit at all. Mm -hmm. It's just that sometimes there's a better fit out there than you knew existed. Let's get into this, man. Let, I, I need your help to, to take a look at these stores. And we're going to start off with some big time heavy hitters. And the, <laughs> the first one is going to be Lafoe. And I've heard about Lafoe since working at the tannery for a while. I remember when they came around, we were all really big fans of Lafoe. Are you familiar with, with them? I am. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Lafoe. I've talked to Steven on the phone quite a few times. He's been very helpful. But let's take a look at the uh, the Aldens here. And we're going to look at boots. Uh, it looks like I got 16 boots here. So the indie boots we've seen a few times. Cooney boot. Cooney boot is like a variant on the uh, jumper boot and looks like maybe a calf from them. That's pretty clean. Alpine. I see this Alpine a lot. Kind of not really big on textures. The suede here. So it seems like I'm seeing a lot of stuff I've seen before. Tell me if you see something that pops out here is like nobody's done so before. The, maybe this the one here. Yeah, the Dearborn, that would be pretty unique as as brett said on your awesome interview with him often the alden makeups are only slightly different you know retailer mm -hmm. to retailer but then there'll be a few that really stick out yeah, and like this um one. yeah this one's this one's awesome this one's a great 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 boot are you familiar with hampton last all i know is that it's true to size typically uh that and the plaza last are really classic dress last for them so get some dress shoes it'll be in that uh when we get to brick and mortar yenny's a huge fan of the plaza last which is pretty rare she's one of the only retailers that stocks a lot of plaza last hmm. so um hampton and plaza are similar the difference being um hampton's as you can see there um it's more elongated it's round but it's a little more pointy whereas the plaza's got the chiseled toe mm -hmm. kind of goes down at an angle but yeah it's cool. I think it's a pretty clean look in the, the uh, what do they call it? This texture, the Regina, gives it a, yeah. a sort of bit of uniqueness as opposed to just being like all black, you know? Yeah, that Regina calf of the green calf that they have is like the softest and most comfortable. I've never worn it, but that's just the word out on the street uh, between that and the Alpine and um, some of the other ones that they've used. Soft kind of seems like a good choice for a like a shaft, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, maybe just a little bit more comfortable. If they, I assume the name stuff is kind of ex more exclusive. Yeah, what's the leather? Aberdeen. Uh, dark Aberdeen brown one. calf. I kind of like those, to be honest with you. I do as well. They do a nice flat welt. It's very clean. So that flat welt right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some flat welts. Um, and I'm not bashing anyone. This is totally uh, just taste, right? Um, totally subjective. But like Truman, they have more of a work boot look. And so their flat welt is like a shelf. It's like huge. Mm -hmm. And for that look, it's really nice, you know, if you want that look. Um, but if you're going refined, uh, this flat welt that Alden has is really nice. It's Very a pretty clean profile. look here. I noticed on my Viber something, I, I've had them for so long that I didn't even realize. But I think they're thinning down the leather and folding it over to make the sort of like clean piping look on the edge. 
and I can't tell if that's what they got going on here or if that's just like some sort of paint. No, this would be French binding actually. So this would be a totally separate piece of leather that they capped the cut edge with and then they sew it on. That's kind of how Alden does it is that classic French binding. Way. Viber does that sometimes too, but they might have some other methods as well. It looks really challenging just from a, a leather worker perspective. So it that's is. a clean, I think that <laughs> really cleans it up though. I've been digging the snuff suede indie boot. We got Chukka. This looks really nice again. It's sort of like the one we just looked at. Let's take a look at this guy. Do you have, or have you had any of their commando soles? I can't remember. I haven't. I'm interested. I like the low profile sort of vibe. I, I honestly really want to try a, a leather sole again from um, from Dale talking to me about it. He's big on leather sole right now. I kind of like this boot though. But wh what do you think about commando? Yeah, I love it. I love their proprietary commando, the half sole. I have it on both these boots here. And it's a really good low profile sole that has like a ton of grip and it's fairly comfortable. It's nice that it's a half sole too, because if you need to replace just this part or just this part, like you, you can, you know, it's probably one of my favorite soles of all time. This last looks kind of interesting on the uh, Chaka here. Maybe it's just me, the angle of the photo. Uh, it's Barry. That toe looks like kind of squared off, doesn't it? The one thing that bothers me about the Alden Chuckas is this stitch. You see it like in yeah. the center? I don't know. It's just like it makes it look a little less clean. But I don't know what the alternative would be. It's just like whole, just do like one big piece of leather, I guess. Which yeah, confessions. <laughs> confessions. I'm not a big Chucka guy in general, so. Um, here's here's why I think yeah. I think I'm considering a chukka is it just seems quick and easy like you could pop that on pretty quickly and just go it's like a adult outside slipper <laughs> I guess uh, <laughs> you know right that's a good point you could do that with a loafer or something but if loafers aren't your thing something like a chukka would be totally you're right the next best thing all right so I think we've sort of exhausted uh, Lafo here because all these other ones are kind of standard I mean I love them. I actually own these brown chrome excels and the kudus. Uh, it seems like there's special makeups. There's the Dearborn, another Dearborn, uh, the Cooney. I was kind of peeking at their Instagram. And I think this gives like a good sense of how much different stuff they do. And again, we were just looking at boots, but they sell a lot of shoes too. Um, even from non Alden folks, like I really like that. <laughs> The, yeah that's cool the, the chamois that we've been seeing a lot of recently i've been more into like i just got into e edward green and they they sell edward green which is like a huge step up but um just expensive. to give the, the breadth of the stuff they deal with it's like they're just doing all kinds of crazy stuff yeah it's very interesting to see the chamois come back around uh at least when i was working at the tannery that there wasn't a huge demand for it and it seems like it's kind of coming back drake's crosby chuckas i know you're not a chucka guy kind of like them i think let's move on to j crew this this also might be kind of quick i think i want to bring up the j crew thing for the sizing question we were talking about because i was looking at chicago here there's a couple locations and i don't know if they have all these but they might have something so people that are trying to get size and you're near like a larger city probably a good chance there's a j crew or, or nordstrom around which we'll look at too but i was looking at the j crew here does any of this stand out to you yeah that ranger mock is fairly unique uh there's actually a i think it's called the ranger boot which is not often seen as well what last is that on like if you scroll down See, I wouldn't be surprised if J. Crew didn't put that on here. Yeah. Uh, last. Nothing. Hard to tell. Yeah, so that's like... Maybe the Aberdeen or something. That's kind of cool looking. Like if you like that kind of thing. The one thing that rubs me the wrong way is the sole here. Oh, it just I looks can see strange. that. It matches, <laughs> it matches nicely. 
in color, but yeah, wedge soles are kind of like uh, I don't know. They, sometimes like they look good, not terribly then... stylish is maybe what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's one of those things. It's like they either look great or they look absolutely awful. You know, so like if if they look good, then they look good and it's usually more of a construction look. And then if they look bad, it's like your grandpa's SAS cushion shoes. You know? <laughs> this kind of goes into grandpa territory, I think. I, I was just kind of looking at the upper and the that sort of mock toe, I think is an interesting idea. This is cool. This is like a very work boot look from them. I think yeah. it's that contrast sort of stitch. Yeah, it's almost like the Roy, but you're you're right. That contrast stitch. Yeah, this the doesn't quarter. have the Roy boot. For, the original one here from Context is like no, no nonsense. If there's not a lot of extra, um, so I'm seeing on this Michigan boot they have the stitch from front to back. That sort of like I don't know highlights the shape of the boot. I guess and maybe that's what's making it look very sort of work booty to me. I kind of like that look though. But yeah, I think it's just their plain toe boot like I'm holding with that extra stitch. So what's your feeling on split toes? So the only two split toes in the entire world that I actually like, I, I've tried them before in other contexts, but or would be this one, which is called like a V-tip or sometimes it's called an Algonquin. Mm -hmm. And then the Edward Green classic Dover look. Um, yeah, so this is a good one. I like this split toe. The Norwegian split toe, which is like, uh, this tech might technically be that, but um, like on Grant Stone's Ottawa boot or on Alden's tanker boot, which is like a more external stitch and it's like really fat and you can see all the all the threads. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of, of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks terrible. I just don't personally so, gravitate toward it. I don't know if this will work here. No. Yeah, that. So the it's like Alden is, Madison see, has it. It's It's like really big, right? Yeah. So this is what you would call the Norwegian split. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I was. My impression was also of sort of getting weird terms. Yeah. I like, I think this one's a little more interesting because it's like not it. so intense. So this is called a V tip. It's a V tip or sometimes it's called an Algonquin. And it's, I think it's really nice. Uh, there's a boot that Brogue has in California. Um, I think it's called the racer. The noir racer it's black mm -hmm. yeah there it is that thing's amazing in my opinion what do you like about this one it just looks like sharp and stealthy which is for me that's that's a lot because i don't like black boots usually i usually mm -hmm. gravitate toward brown but this is one of the black boots that i'm a big fan of it's just it's like sinister and stealthy and sharp sinister is a good word yeah yeah, it's interesting. I, I've been saying on these Let's Buy Boots things that I don't have any black leather footwear. Uh, so I'm trying to solve that. And I want I want the stealth look. I just want a total black beat down. <laughs> 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 these are yeah. cool, though. It's like, uh, what is this like? It's like the indie boot with Commando Soul with the, with the V tip. That's actually a really good way to put it. It's almost like this, a, this a refined, indie stitch. Yeah. It's like refined indie where yeah. everything's like toned down. Yeah, that's cool. Good way okay. to put it. So that's, I guess this is kind of like that too, right? This is that same boot we were just looking at, but that one was black shell. This is like brown calf. These two stuck out at me earlier. Pebbled leather wingtip boots and suede Algonquin. So let's look at the pebbled. Now, I feel like, and I have no data to back this up, I feel like the textures are really polarizing. Like, I think a small amount of people can't get enough of it and just love this. And I think there's a lot of people that are just really turned off by it. Uh, where do you stand on, on pebbling or texture prints and that sort of stuff? Yeah, so you're right. Super polarizing. The only one that Alden does that I like is the Regina. The others I don't like, you know, most like scotch grains, pebble grains, because 
Uh, and this is different because it's black, but usually they're featured in some kind of like tan or reddish leather. And to me, it looks like you're wearing a shoe made out of basketball leather. Yep. <laughs> Which just looks super odd to me. Um, I think Alden Madison right now is running an indie in some kind of grain. I think I saw that on Instagram. And yeah, it just looks like basketball shoes to me. So a lot of guys love it, though. There's other grains out there that I have a strong appreciation for. Um, like a lot of the UK makers, I think actually do it really well because that's kind of where a lot of it comes from. It feels more like a canvas looking like tennis shoe or something like just the aesthetic of it. I can't really figure out why that is. It it just kind of doesn't feel like a natural material. Maybe that's what I'm trying to, to say. Well, you uh, and I, we really love leather, right? And I think when something makes it look fake, it's like, why did you mess up the leather? You know, you know? <laughs> I actually learned that from you. Mm, um, so to me, to me, some of it's that. So if it's like, if it's a grain that looks like it could have been kind of natural, I might like it. But if it looks like super artificial, then I'm like, this looks like a coach purse at the mall. I actually kind of like it. I don't think I'd spend $600 on it. Let's take a look at the other one, though. This was kind of like the boot you like, right? The Sinister. That's wow. especially that angle is kind of awesome. I like it. So we got the Algonquin suede. And it's kind of gray, isn't it? At least in that yeah. one angle. This is this is that thing that uh <laughs> that Brett calls uh murdered out. It's like yes. all black. The one thing Ooh. about this suede, I wish you know how people are really into the reverse chamois. People like the the like less tight nap on the reverse chamois. Like this pair here is probably a good example. Again, it's Alden Madison, of course. Way to go, Alden Madison. Um, good SEO. But uh, how this sort of has a little bit more rugged nap to it, and it it looks it looks lively. And, and I can I know why that is. It's because the chamois from Horween is a ton of neat's foot oil on it. But there's something about that. Uh, what were we just looking at? There's something about this J. Crew one that looks like empty. It looks like really dry to me, especially in this photo. It kind of just looks dead inside or something. <laughs> uh, as opposed to to like that, which has sort of this like lively sort of wet look almost. Because if these were a little bit more rich in appearance and the nap was slightly tighter, like less tight, more coarse nap. Uh, I think I'd buy these <laughs> to be honest with you. And see, that's the thing about the photography too, is like, I think you're probably right objectively on this particular one, but sometimes you got that experience where online it looks dead or online it looks awesome. And then and in real life, it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the shell photos I see of Alden, if that was how they looked in real life, like I would never buy them, but they're actually amazing in real life. So Dale has this pair of Trumans that I think is in black chamois. Like, even like that has like more life to it uh, than that other suede we were just looking at. So that looks like what the limited stuff that J. Crew has. I kind of like, I'm not much of a loafers guy and these aren't boots, but these kind of struck me in the right way. I just think there's like something old timey and like nice about that. I couldn't wear them, but. I like that. Yeah, I like the vibe. They have a particularly nice penny loafer, in my opinion. This is the van last. It's a high wall last, whereas a lot of loafers are very low profile. This was actually Floyd Gilmore's, uh, one of his favorite lasts. Hmm. Um, Wyatt's grandfather, the famous Floyd Gilmore, who worked for Alden for decades. He, uh, he wore the van last. He wore these a lot, I guess. Um, yeah, it's almost like you're wearing a loafer, but you're actually wearing a moccasin. All right, let's get out of J. Crew and go to Nordstrom, which is another huge store. So let's skim this down here and tell me if anything pops out. I mean, I'm just going to say right away, uh, these first two kind of stick out to me. So <laughs> let's go into it. U-tip mock stitch. So what's different? Is that just a regular hand-sewn sort of indie stitch? U-tip is when it's not on the true balance. So like typically that same stitch when it's on the true balance last is it's called an indie. 
And then when you put it on a berry last or another last, they usually call it a U-tip, but it's I basically see. the same thing. Um, and then when it's on shelf or that one Alden Madison makeup that Brett mentioned, which you actually pulled up a minute ago, I can't remember. I think it might be the Hendrick. Um, um, yeah, it's yeah. hand stitched. Whereas, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's hand stitched. Whereas typically it's a machine stitch that's just flat. Uh, you know what I don't like about the regular indie boots is that extra bit of stitching. Personally, I just I want less stuff to be honest with you. So I, I kind of like this one a lot, and a lot of Commando soles recently, right? I feel like I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of Commando, and it looks like that could have been made a little better. <laughs> so here's here's a question for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's a question for you. So do you prefer? Maybe this depends on the makeup for you, but in general, do you prefer? like brown edge dressing on the side of the sole or do you like it all blacked out well i suppose the answer is it depends but if if um if i didn't have something specific in mind like an all black boot where i would want black edge dressing i probably just do the clean like waxed edge like a natural look personally i don't have um like these crepe soles kind of have that so like if it was a leather bottom, I think 100% would do wax natural edge. Uh, just because I think that sort of stacked chunk of leather looks really cool when it's just all polished up. But for me, on something like a crepe or anything else, like I don't really care if I'm seeing some rubber. Like it, it, I don't know. I can kind of go either way on it. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> no, man, I'm with you on that. Actually, I, I mean, typically prefer like what we're looking at here, or like you said, like a natural with some wax. I just like seeing the stack of leather. Leather, you know. Let's take a look at this guy. So this is the texture you hate. It's scotch grain. Yeah, typically if it's a scotch grain or a pebble grain, I'm not a big fan. Sometimes I like it, but usually I think, hey. Anybody want to go play basketball? <laughs> right. Here's something to point out. Uh, it's a little better on this photo. I remember, again, I wonder how many times I've started a sentence with when I worked at the tannery. But take a look at the toe, <laughs> the very tip of the toe. One of the challenges we always saw with uh, texture that is not every leather will hold a print. And see how smoothed out the toe is there? It's like the texture disappeared when they when they lasted it that's probably something to be aware of if you're looking at these in person it shouldn't be smooth like that that you should still see a bit of texture it actually looks like this photo's got a, a little better maybe maybe it's just this photo but that being super smooth right there looks very strange to me it looks wrong and... that's such a awesome observation yeah like i see they it did a better that. job on this sold though so <laughs> oh, yeah, look one. at that look at that there's not adhesive spilling all over the place but no you're right like when they last the toe some leather kind of ruins the the texture and then like if it's something like chrome xl i find that like there's like a happy median as well like some people don't last it tight enough and then some people it's so tight that like there's no more pull-up factor in the toe because mm -hmm. it's like so tight yeah we were always really picky on the on the embossing or debossing because of the football leather that Horwin's also sort of famous for. And if they made a football that had, that was slick, you know, the, the players would probably be pretty upset. So in the leather world, there's the veg tan leathers and then the chrome tan leathers, the veg tan stuff tends to hold shape a little bit better. So the football leather for Horwin has a lot of tree barks that make it a veg tan leather that allow it to hold that texture better especially when the leather gets wet and then wrapped around the last or something football will really hold that texture in there there's some stuff that just doesn't like a full chrome thing probably not hold any texture very well at all this is interesting too huh so straight tip blucher boot so what's a straight tip so that's alden's jargon for basically just a cap toe that doesn't have broguing or pinking on it. Um, everyone else just calls it a cap toe. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. And this looks like it's got two rows of double stitching across, which is like the little detail that sets it apart, which is, I think kind of cool. I like it. And then it's got that stitch that outlines the heel counter. 
I like that too. Did you watch the uh, other episode where I saw the, the Alden Madison Chrome Excel boot with that? It's like beautiful looking. I'm gonna pull it up again. Yeah, yeah. It's it's maybe it's the photography, but this uh, was it under pre-orders? Yeah, this dirty bones is so cool looking, and it, I think part of what makes it cool is that. And it's definitely photoshopped in there, but this heel stitch is really neat looking. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's a badass boot right there. And, and it's got the hand stitched uh, U stitch on the front. Okay, so here's the question What's the going rate for a shell cordovan boot uh, like this? Is it 810? Yeah, right around there. It's like 810 to 850. If it's special, it might be 900 or like a rare shell it'll be like 900 plus like if it's color four or whiskey or something how Eight. about how about uh chrome excel chrome excel that's usually if it's like an indie that's in the usually like in the 500s if it's like a special makeup it might be in the 600s because to me that so like this guy's uh where's the final price 650 Six, that's yeah. like pretty close to 810 <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I'm like sh I struggle with this now. It's like, do I just spend an extra hundred and sixty dollars and buy a pair of shell? That's actually kind of what happened to me. I went to San Francisco to the Alden shop, and I was literally thinking I'm gonna go buy an indie. And then when I got there and saw these, and then realized they were only like, you know, less than two hundred dollars more. I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to do this. So I got the shell. Skimming the rest of Nordstrom here. Not a ton of boots. A couple truck is here. All right, let's check out um the Armory, which I probably should be embarrassed that I am not familiar with these guys. I, I feel like I say that a lot. And it's here's I'll tell you the reason why. I'll go to these stores for this, this video, and I'm looking and trying to read their story, which I read. And then I'll go to... um. I'll go to their Instagram page and I'm like, oh my God, they have 116,000 followers. So how have I never followed this before? You know? And I th I just think I'm not this guy, you know, I'm not really wearing this type of stuff. I would wear that to be honest with you. I think that looks cool, but I'm, I'm just kind of not very dressy. I'm, a, I'm very casual. I would wear all this though. So maybe I should be checking these guys out. Anyways, going back. <laughs> <laughs> these <laughs> these guys are also in New York, unless I'm misremembering. Uh, the Armory was founded in Hong Kong by Mark Cho and Alan C. It was born from our passion for classic styling and our interest in telling the stories of truly exceptional artisans and their project our products. Plain toe snuff suede uh, snuff suede blucher. That is really cool, and you know me about how much I like plain toes. I would totally wear that, but it's not a boot. The toe looks a little weird, though, doesn't it? Like, maybe it's the angle of the photo, but it looks like a little, like, uh, like triangular, this sort of thing right here. Could just be the angle. Yeah, it might be the plaza last. That's very, kinda... very Oh, really? Nice. That's so crazy. I wonder... Uh... Maybe yeah, it's because it's the suede. Maybe it's online or something in there yeah maybe I it looks like super it. comfy yeah i kind of like it not a boot though here's that same uh loafer more loafers another chukka so there's not a lot of boots from these guys <laughs> so this is kind of a short view of them but let's let's just see what they're about because i'm kind of curious what aesthetic would you call this? I would call this like New York guy stuff. <laughs> is that a, a genre of clothing? Yeah, dude. I like it. Uh, I would wear these. Yeah, it's not like stuff I wear all the time. Yeah, it's definitely like upper end business clothing. Mm -hmm. I kind of like these, to be honest with you. I don't like the green one, but I like the brown one. Oh, I love it too. And the safari jackets that you passed up. Yeah, that kind of stuff's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I think I'd probably wear more 
like if I wasn't with the kids all the time, like I always think about that when I get something, I'm like, how easy would it be for one of my kids to ruin this? <laughs> I, I put on clothes these days based on whether or not I think I'm going to get vomited on. <laughs> so like, will I be okay if this is covered in milk, like partially digested milk? <laughs> Dave, why don't you tell me about brick and mortar? So Yenny, she's a wonderful lady. She worked at another place that sold Alden for quite a few years. And then she went and started brick and mortar in Seattle. And uh, one of the first makeups, actually, there's a wingtip boot in suede i believe it's snuff suede and it's called the yenny it's called the yenny and i asked her about it she was like i didn't actually name that boot um it was just that the store had just started and this was a boot we were collabing and they said it's the yenny because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what else to call it and so oh, here it it's is. always been the yenny yeah so that's like the snuff suede version of the ones that I have from them. What I like about their wingtips, and this is controversial, like uh, many people don't share my opinion, um, including very experienced people like uh, Ticho Blanco, but like it's got a clear quarter back here. Like there's no broguing right here where the counter is. And a lot of guys like to see that on a wingtip, whether it's a boot or a shoe. And I like how it's just clean back here. Interesting. I I do feel like it's a little off balance. It does like just aesthetically look like it's forward heavy or something. Yeah, and I think that's why people typically think that the broguing back there looks better. I'm kind of in the other camp where I think this looks balanced to me and putting broguing back there is like too much of a good thing. It's like, well, there's like holes all over this boot. Like, it's like you shot it with a machine gun. Like, why would you want more broguing on the back of the boot? That's kind of how I am. Like this guy here, Debonair. See, honestly, I got to be honest. I, I totally get what you're saying, too. I think I would pick this. But a lot of retailers have something that's like really unique about them. Mm -hmm. For instance, a molded shoe. They work in the modified last a ton, which like it's hard to find a modified last Alden almost anywhere else. And then for this store I, personally i think brick and mortar does some of the most unique makeups and old wine would be a close second or equivalent but uh the plaza last is really common here and then they have a lot of really great makeups that i like every shop has a different way of dealing with the rare shell yeah so like yenny will put you on a wait list but she'll ask you what you're looking for and that way it's a little more customized. Other shops will just put everybody on a general waiting list. But you're you're on the right track because a lot of guys have this thing in their head. I was this way, by the way. So I'm not just bashing people. I've made so many mistakes on my own, which is why I can say this. Um, they have this thing in their head like every last should work for me. I just have to find the right size. And that's just not true. It's like, no, dude, there's like 100 lasts out there that you should never try to wear because it's just it's not good for your foot type. Like for me in the Grant last, it's just like a high end step last. I should stay away from it at all costs. Or like if your feet are, your toes splay out like this, you know, it's like you should never, ever try a last that's known for being like super narrow and pointy. But guys do it all the time. And I used to. Um, so you're, you're just trying to be cool. Ex or, some, or just you don't know. But yeah. Just um, trying to be so Dave instead of David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Stinking Dave. Get out, Dave. <laughs> um but yeah like you're on the right track because you're already you're asking the right questions like hey maybe this last is not the right shape and I'm like dude that's right on yeah okay uh so not that this is super unique to them but but it is fairly unique they have a lot of straight tip boots that are pretty low profile which i like so like there's the shell one if you scroll up so that they have a chrome xl version of this too that's on the very last so they do this straight tip uh, they'll do a flat welt and it's like a nice tight flat welt. So it's not sticking out super far. I mean, it's really clean. This one is really nice. I think it's the plaza last or is it yeah. plaza last? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Dale says plaza. I say plaza. I think, so. I, I think I have the mega Chicago accent. So I say plaza, but I don't know if that's right or wrong. I, I think these no look idea. really, really nice. 
one thing I like about all the, in general, all these makeups is they have that little hardware cover on the inside. They stitch some, they stitch leather right here over the hardware instead yeah. of just it being exposed. And I think that's not only refined, but it also just protects the tongue and your, your ankles. I mean, their black boots are cool because I think they do like contrasting eyelets, which is really nice. It looks strange for some reason. That looks better. Maybe black is not what I want. Because I was looking at, uh, somebody had suggested I pick these up. Um, because it's the all black I was asking for. I don't know. The black, it could just be the photos. It just looks strange. They I will don't say have the same vibe. Yeah, I will say as much as like I used to hate the fact that Alden puts that acrylic finish on their shell, the color E, and they make it darker. I used to hate that, but I've grown to appreciate it because like in some lights it almost looks black. So it's like you wear this color eight and it can be brown, it can be black, it can be burgundy, it could be eggplant. You know, it's like the boot that does it all. So this is the texture you like. Yeah, the Regina. They have a black one, too, with contrasting eyelets, and I think it looks killer. This one looks good, but the black one that's probably down lower is, like, even better. This guy. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah. As Brett said, there's never going to be anything with Alden that's, like, like, way different than anything you've seen. But it's all, like, the subtleties, and I think Brick and Mortar has a lot of good subtleties in their makeups. I can't, honestly, I kind of like the brown ones more. But yeah, they're both cool. Yeah, like if I had to do a grain with Alden, it would be that one. The other ones I just can't bear to see. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit more subtle. It looks more natural. Yeah, less forced for sure. Oh, they got a lot of stuff to look at. We got to keep moving on. So these look like the boots I have, but there's no speed hooks. But those are, I really like the plain toe Chrome Excel boots from any anybody. I think are just awesome looking. Yeah, and the... Yeah, my buddy Geo has the plain Chrome XL, the straight tip Chrome XL right here, and then this walnut brown calf straight tip, along with that color eight straight tip we looked at earlier. Um, I had mentioned I like their straight tips. I think they, I think Yanni does a really good job with straight tips. I think that's like totally in her wheelhouse. It's a certain look. If if someone doesn't like that particular look, then they won't like it. But if if they like that kind of like sleek straight tip look. Uh, I think she nails it. I really like to look at this one again. This one's new, and I haven't got to really see much of it other than the product photos. But to me, this one's a winner for sure. I get the sense that the uh, leather on this one has uh, a dynamic color range to it. Just based on some of the different angles, they appear more red and orange, like in the center here. Yeah, I've never seen this one in real life, but I know that for these ones, this is called technically called burnished tan, tan. calf. Um, it's a very nice, soft leather. It's got some life to it, some glow. So that that's probably even better, I would think. On your hand, it looked lighter in color than this. Maybe it's my screen, but this looks like kind of orange and red. Yep, that's the same exact boot. And Yours looks more is... yellow, like whiskey color. Yep, and that's true. Like the rendition on the video right now, like is accurate. It looks pretty much like that. I'm not so much like on the product photo. They do a lot of blue suede like that right there. Haven't it, seen a lot of this. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying about how they do a lot of unique stuff. Like with them and Brogue and Aldwine, I think you'll see a lot of stuff you don't see anywhere else. I've been harping on the tight suede. This one looks awesome. Like the tight nap where it's like very fine. I think this looks really good. Yeah, and they have like cream colored stitching right there. To match the soles, the outsoles. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that's really nice. I think the wedge sole works because True Balance is kind of like a work boot last, as they say. And so the wedge kind of goes along with that. But So there's a few makeups in that earth. That earth is like, sometimes it looks black. Sometimes it looks green. Uh, it's a trippy deal. Like even if you compare the multiple Earth Reverse Chamois makeups they have just on this one website, they all look just a hair different from each other. This is pretty neat. I think this might have been the one of the ones that Brett Klein suggested to me. It might have been from a different store, but the Earth with the 
with the natural colored welt. He said framed out the edge really nicely when you look at it top down like this. Yeah, there's a few leathers that are like, you normally describe some of the shell leathers like this, like amaretto, where like you can't really photograph them very well because there's like seven different colors depending on the angle. Right. So yep. like this would be one of those in my opinion. Like when I saw it in the store and in this, uh, I think it was San Francisco that I saw it. It's like, wow, that is so much more dynamic than I thought when I saw it online. What does it look like in person? How would you describe it? It's just like a chameleon, kind of like amaretto shell. It's like you turn it this way and it looks gray. You turn it this way and it looks blue. This way and it looks black. This way and it looks like a like a dark green. Hmm. You know, it's just like very elusive, uh, which is cool because it stays interesting for like years, you know. Is it so. color shifting in like a annoying way when you're walking around like you got this like weird twinkle toe thing going on <laughs> like, I don't know. no no it's because it's not shiny like shell so it's not like that it's just a matter of like it's gonna definitely be one of those colors where like you <laughs> argue with your wife or whoever like it's blue no it's green no it's blue no it's green no it's black no it's green so see the other one it's a uh, earth smooth chamois so that's the other side um this one here or no, the next one, one. Yeah, it's instead of the flesh side, it's the smooth side. So see how it's to me, anyways. It looks like there's more like charcoal and green coming out. So I I have this like theory. I think when it comes to boot designs, you're not necessarily looking for a company. You're looking for a designer, like a specific person. And so like, not that Brett does it all by himself, but Brett Viber does a great job at designing um and so even if he were to switch companies i'd follow him because he's coming out with these great designs yenny's the same if mm. she quit alden and she started selling something else it wouldn't be long before the brand that she's selling starts churning out some amazing makeups like i'm, I'm probably biased but i think she's earned that bias is what i'm trying to say i feel like i've seen this boot with a different color mock toe at a few stores i like this one more because it's sort of more tonal with the rest of the the leather it's like a little bit less like hey look at look at my mock toe <laughs> brett was saying that these two colors of chamois uh, i guess this is uh suede hummus suede but the chamois he said were really hip right now people are picking those up faster than anything else and the one that used to be that with this snuff suede which i can totally see why i remember seeing a j crew long wing in this leather way back when and going crazy from this is cool i'm starting to see the plaza last like by accident now but that's very different it's an indie boot with a plaza last and a and a commando soul and what's clever about it is the plaza is usually reserved for dress shoes which is why you don't see it through many other retailers of alden mm-hmm and she like takes this thing and makes kind of rugged looking boots out of it. And I think it's just a genius intersection of those two things. Like um, Wyatt from Grant Stone did the same thing with the Leo last. Leo last is actually a loafer last. And then he's like, I'm going to put it on a boot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that ends up being like a weird freak of nature thing. But I think in these two examples, it's really working. This is kind of neat too which I feel like you've seen this boot a million times. It's just like a really clean look look of it. Mm. Am I wrong? This is like just such a classic work boot. I think you're right. This is like really tasty. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at their um, Instagram. I love dog photos so much. <laughs> That's <laughs> like my, <laughs> my weakness. You have color so HL, right? I do. And do yours look color... like this? It's a chameleon. It's uh, there's one post on my Instagram where I show like all these different shades of the same exact boots in different lights. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love so much about it. But yeah, like mine looks like that sometimes. But this is a good way to check the colors too cuz on the website different boots look like they're the wrong color and then you look here and you're like, "Oh, it's different." Here's that chamois again. Look how nice that looks. Yeah. Yeah, like I think Brett said this, but Alden only has certain leathers they allow you to use, you know? So it's not quite like Viberg where like there's like all these crazy leathers that they're using. There's like a certain amount they use and that's it. I think those look really good on this dude. 
<laughs> yeah, like, no, I, agree. I agree. It's like a good jean boot, I guess. Yeah, it's a good pop without having like way too much pop. These look beautiful, by the way. That color, uh, the directionality in the suede. Maybe we'll end it and look at you. Also, <laughs> your um, your handle here. <laughs> Boots of mannish leather. <laughs> so do you know what that's from? No. The only people in the world that would get that would be Bob Dylan fans because he's got oh, that no. famous song, uh, Boots of Spanish Leather. All right, let's look at your stuff. What are these? So that's my latest pickup. I'm actually wearing those right now. That's my Edward Green. I, I jumped in the Edward Green pond. I had to know what the hype was all about. What do you think? I think they're amazing. I think it's one of those things where the, the extra that you're paying for is stuff that most people wouldn't care about. So when people say they're too expensive, I'm like, dude, I get it. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. But if you're like just one of those people that nerds out super hard over meaningless details, I think they really do deliver on their promise. So you're a leather guy, right? So like you would love this. So that's the Utah leather. It's from an undisclosed tannery in the Rhine Valley in France. It's like a French version of Chrome XL. Like they, huh. it's combo tanned, uh, vegetable retanned, just like Chrome XL. And it's got like nine different fats, waxes, and oils. It's calf. So it's like got super tight grain break but it's super soft. Anyways, it's, it's cool. It's like just cool seeing like this stuff people are doing all around the world that doesn't get as acclaimed as, you know, maybe some of the more famous leathers out there. Look how they hid that stitch too, like with the finish. <laughs> so this stitch, I'm just going to nerd out super hard right now. So, okay. So that's an internal stitch instead of external. And then all that stitching is hand sewn on the apron stitch and the split toe. And it's all done with a boar's bristle instead of a needle. So they Why? take like, uh, so it's a, it's, it dates back to the middle ages. They used to sew with a boar's hair and two reasons. One, a boar's hair can take curved angles a lot better than a metal needle can mm -hmm. or even a bone needle. And then two, the boar's hair is so fine but there was always the eye of the needle, which was bigger than the needle itself. And it would like catch on the hole. So with a boar's hair, it'll go like through the hole seamlessly without catching. There's like only a small, small handful of people on the planet that still know how to sew with a boar's bristle. You know what? That and, makes a lot of sense. I'm not, yeah. I actually honestly haven't heard of that, but that's so, wild. So this is one of those things that like you pay for with Edward Green that like if someone says they don't care, I'm like, dude, I get it. It's stupid. But for me, I think that's super cool that like there's this tiny little handful of human beings that still know how to do this. And Edward Green is keeping the tradition alive. And they're they're doing all their Dovers and Cranley boots with this boar's bristle thing. It's super cool. How do you feel? So you, you said you you like the finishing on the, the Alden Color H shell stuff. I didn't ask Alden, but that's like when you go on Style Forum or the subreddit Goodyear Welt thing, uh, that's what everybody says it is. So I assume they're right. <laughs> I noticed the uh, shell plain toes I have from Viberg have sort of like a a white sort of, we would call it like a checked look, uh, where it's like when you're flexing, just imagine any substance with a wax layer on top. And if you were to flex it, that wax starts to migrate off a little bit. And I notice in the where the toe flexes on these boots, it's starting to get a, that similar look where it's like a little bit white, but it sort of polishes back in. I wonder if there's more wax than like plastic. Totally agree. That's one of the few things that if I could change, I would probably change. But... On this plain tail pair right here? Yeah, totally. Is how in the little valleys of the rolls, it's a little more white. I guess you could say it's like pull up or something. And I don't hate it, but I definitely wish it was a little darker. Tell me about these, this pair. Oh, that's, so that's my wife. She, I got her these Truman women's boots and they're a big hit. She looks great in them and total badass. Su super solid. Yeah. Yeah. We're both loving it. And she said, it's interesting. She was like, Hey, now, when I wear my tennis shoes, I feel like I have no support compared to these oh. boots. I was like, oh, interesting. Turn her into a boot person. I always check the aerial view because that's what you see as the wearer. And it's like, who cares how they look on Instagram? <laughs> if they look like crap when you're wearing them, like who wants to wear them? You know, this is sort of the um, the toe spring look, right? From from Truman. 
Yeah. So that's my wife's boots again. And they're, they're not like intentionally super sprung, but I think as you wear them, they get sprung a little bit. Yeah. Have you worn anything with the toe like that? Yeah. So I used to have these Fiber 310s, which are awesome. And maybe I'll own some more someday. I forget where I heard it, but it's sort of like a walking from starting with your heel and then landing on your toe kind of vibe. I'm just super curious to how they feel, you know, when you're walking around. Yeah, no, I, I love the toe spring. It feels weird. It feels like you're falling forward in a good way. Like you're gliding on the ground, but then mm. Honestly, after you walk around for like 30 minutes, then you lose the sensation. This is my criticism of veg leathers. They tend to do this. Like kind of kind of no matter what. They tend to be a little less tight. I don't it doesn't bother me. And sometimes you see it on the Chrome XL, perhaps to a lesser extent. I don't know. It's not on a work boot like does that matter to you? Not with that leather. So I kind of change my opinion depending. So if it's, I don't know, Dublin definitely, or I guess even Chrome Excel, then the big grain break doesn't actually bother me as much because I'm like, hey, this is kind of a rugged leather. That's part of the beauty in my mind. Or even the Badalassi tannery, they have that Minerva leather I have on my Grant Stone brass boots. I don't mind big. It does the same thing as this, right? Totally. It's just these wicked big breaks. And I don't mind it. But if it's like a calfskin thing. Anytime you try to make the leather something it's not, it, it looks more fake. So you balance this world of like, does this look natural? Like my transparently finished piece of wood guitar back here. And like you can tell that's a piece of wood. Or are we like putting some stuff on top of it and making it into something else? There, there's a balance between doing nothing and being just like naturally beautiful and then doing a lot to make it super consistent. And that's, to me, that's the nutshell of, of leather is you can pick one or the other. I'm, I'm tempted on these. I'm still looking for an all blacked out something, but I might compromise because now that I'm starting to see some stuff that is all black, it looks weird. Maybe I have to see it in person. Yeah. I mean, typically, I mean, you know this already. You probably, it's not like you've never thought of this, but like, yeah, I'll, if I find something I like, I'll go on Instagram and then I'll just search for it. Like just enthusiasts, users, their, their pictures of it. And that kind of gives me a good idea of what it looks like. Yeah. It should be under a hashtag. Yeah. Earth Shamwa or Shammy. Yeah. It's so funny. I gained a bad habit. So all growing up the chamois leather for like drying your car, Same we thing. always called it chamois. Yeah. And then I got into boots and all these people call it chamois. So I started calling it chamois. And then you told me it's like chamois. And I'm like, yeah, duh, I should know that. Oh, I it's bad. Yeah. Maybe it's uh maybe it's really this thing. Um <laughs> maybe it's the, <laughs> maybe it's this guy. You remember? Oh my goodness. <laughs> chamois. <laughs> Arrested. Yeah, it's a chamois. Oh my god. It's been a while since I thought about this guy. <laughs> All right, before we get into too deep on this guy, geez. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to go with Dave. I think you're a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, man. Um, appreciate you helping me out and uh, open my ass to some more great boot stuff. Well, thanks so much, man.